Thank you for joining me here and sharing your story. Annette, would you just mind uh, sharing with us how you came to start your business? Mm, okay. Well, yeah, I feel like it, it feels like quite a long story, so I won't go into all of it, but it's kind of... It's um, all good. <laughs> <laughs> there have been lots of kind of shifts. It feels like there's been lots of uh, happy coincidence and experience building to this point when I was thinking about it, actually, because um, about 14 years ago, I used to be a legal PA. So I was in a very nice. corporate environment. Um, it was fine. It was one of those jobs where you can like, fine. you go to work, you go home, it's fine. Uh, fine. But I got to a point where I, enemy. yeah, it was all a bit meh. And I got to a point where I wasn't enjoying it anymore. And uh, my mum, who I can see has also joined the live as a, a primary school teacher and head teacher. You said, so you I, said she would I join. used to go to theater a lot. I used to get taken to the theater. I never really thought about working in it. And then I started volunteering on a show as a steward. And I just had that experience of, hmm, these are, these are my people. These people are really interesting and passionate. And I love seeing the experience of the audience. My favorite bit was always at the end, asking people what they'd enjoyed and that kind of feedback of seeing their really joyful smiles. So mm -hmm. I gradually decided to leave the corporate world behind and changed career and started working in the arts, which took kind of a year of like overlap of transition. Um, and you know, occasionally still miss the in-house gym, but you know, that's the only thing about the, the job that I miss. It the turns perks. out. <laughs> yes. Yeah. The perks um, were the so then, handcuffs sometimes, right? Yeah. In, in, indeed. Yeah. Oh, that's a whole other subject. But um, yeah, and then I sort of I so within the time working in the arts, I've worked across things like theatre producing and sort of general arts management, quite a lot of generalist jobs, and then later into arts fundraising, which. Mm was interesting but very pressurized okay and you know there's a point where it sometimes feels a bit like sales mm -hmm, um sure and then i like a lot of people the, when the pandemic hit and the, the sector as i'm sure it did in the us it just kind of imploded yeah and everything stopped well, um, everybody like, had to reorient right everyone was sort of hit by a wave mm -hmm, yeah very much so um, yeah. yeah, and I uh, I was made redundant from the part-time role that I was doing as an arts fundraiser. Mm -hmm. um, and the other job that I was doing freelance, I decided to leave that as well. And literally this was about three or four weeks after we went into full lockdown in Minbach in this country. And I just thought, I thought everything was going to drop off a cliff. But I then started working with some really interesting people and I decided to do more on the coaching side, having qualified in 2019, and just found so much joy in doing it, um, especially the group work. And um, yeah, it was just like, you know, when you hit that flow moment, where you're just like, oh, oh yeah, this, this is it. So I then, you know, you, you then make that commitment to think, okay, so I've kind of cut ties from what I was doing before. This is my opportunity to just go for it, see what happens, and yeah. dive in. See the water is supposed to come up again. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Dive in. I, I use them too. I think like we're all in the swim. Mm. I think and and um, it's great to have company in the swim. Yeah. I say sometimes. Um, but wait, sorry. Did I did I catch it that you? had the, I mean, we all had the shift in 2020, but in 2019, you had already started to plant some seeds, it sounds like. There was something there. Well, back in uh, 2017, I had some coaching myself, which got wow. me through a really challenging time in a really a yeah. pretty toxic work environment. And it was like, yeah. I just, so I recognized the power of it. So I think that's right. what planted the seed in the first place. Um, right. And actually, when I decided to, to uh, get the coaching qualification, I did the same qualification that my coach had done oh um, got it so yeah it, it was there i think from 2017 it was in the back of my yeah. mind just kind of this this yeah. seed that had been planted and also so a big just, thing for me as well oh, sorry go <laughs> no no i just like to point out that like mm. before it's real it was cooking and yes. how what i've learned and of course you and i are in a, a coaching container with Susie ashworth 
just this this um, calling on listening to our intuition and our inner knowing is really such a beautiful resource that is quite new to me, really. I think I've been in the struggle swim, mm-hmm. you know, um, much more. So just just calling out, like, how beautiful that you you knew before you knew. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, totally. I think it's, and sometimes it's this kind of cumulative effect, isn't it? That something's planted and then little things will happen that keep leading you in that direction. And yeah. it's that build up. And then suddenly at some point you'll go, obviously it's that. But it yes. takes the accumulation of it. Well, and obviously not till, I mean, hindsight is obvious, right? Mm. I, or in some ways the, or the, I mean, the present, it, it clicks. But then you go, oh, right, all of this was planting toward this moment. Yes. Which just points to, I mean, this is what I love about this podcast, is everyone who comes here is demonstrating this faith, right? Because you have to say yes before you, you know, before it all is uh, the the harvest, you know. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. applauding you. (laughs) <laughs> nice job so um your business now how does it look what's the that's a really good core? question it feels like it's it's still evolving yeah uh so i started it officially like the first of december 2020 I, I went official as a limited company um yeah. and since then it's been a kind of gradual build and response to what the need is that i'm seeing and kind of moving from that, because I think a big thing for me was when I was working the arts, I was seeing how hard people work. Mm-hmm. And when you were talking earlier about that kind of the golden handcuffs thing, I think mm-hmm. in the corporate sector, you get the golden handcuffs. In the arts, you do the hours and you, you don't get those handcuffs. Unfortunately, you don't get the gold <laughs> because it's just long hours yeah. and you don't get gold as well. Um, yeah. So I was really passionate about supporting the people like me who were kind of backstage of backstage, like the mm-hmm. arts fundraisers and the administrators. And it feels like the the business has evolved to support those people because those are the people where I, I have the context and I understand what the challenges are for them. I'm really right. wanting to help them to think about their own well-being because yes. they're so used to supporting other people and making other people's visions come true. If you're like a producer, that's what you do. Oh, interesting. So, and of yeah. course, I can see how that would attract women because that's also the cultural hypnosis right that we are just here to hold up other people when Mm -hmm. it turns out that we are the superheroes ourselves as well um so yeah it's a lot of uh building around that idea so and also the reason i think i you know i mentioned that i love doing the group stuff is because a lot of the people i work with feel quite isolated because they're sort of carrying a lot and doing a lot for other people and maybe not feel not feeling that they can show when they're struggling or show that vulnerability so it's mm-hmm. about the group space that lets them be in a space where there are other people who feel similar and they yeah. can show some of that vulnerability that messiness without feeling unsafe about it in a sense amazing what a what a gift that you know how to facilitate that kind of space for people in a group because i i haven't done group i'd love to sort of that's something I'm planting now but Mm. something I really admire about you is is the feedback I've heard you report about your group spaces that people do feel safe yeah it's beautiful I'll tell you a secret it's actually sort of easier in a way it doesn't sound easier to me well maybe it's just because I love doing it but there's something where so much of the power of the group is how they interact with each other. So sometimes you feel like you're just kind of standing back and watching it happen. Yeah, but you created a world I talk a lot about in my coaching that you are at like the privilege and responsibility is you are the mm-hmm. world builder. And you did something to make that uh, the climate that was welcome, you know, welcoming that interaction. Mm. So and I think that's just your who you are, your presence. So. Maybe. Yeah, it'd be great to hear from your family and your tribe 
who's who knows that part of you too. So jump in with comments, anybody, anyone, anytime. So um, tell me then uh, about your greatest joy in your business. Uh, I think it is watching the dynamics between people. Uh, mm. I love it when you get a group of people together. I mean, like 90% of what I've been doing is on Zoom, obviously, because of the world that we're in at the moment. I have done some in-person group workshops as well. But there's something really lovely about people coming together across geographies yes. and time zones. Um, and it's very different perspectives. And just seeing how just even the, the slightest different perspective will you'll see that aha moment will go, someone will go, oh, right, so that's a slightly different angle on how I thought of this thing. And mm -hmm. again, it's just that, that idea of community building and supporting each other by being really open with each other. And when you get those light bulb moments of someone just clicking. Yes. This is, um, again, we're in this container together too with Susie. And, and mm -hmm. that was, this is kind of my first time uh, investing in community like this and it just amazes me every time actually when you just said that um, uh, people gathering across geographies and supporting each other I just wanted to share with you I just got a little picture in my head of a world map with all these little pin lights lighting up mm -hmm. all over the the land and it gave me sort of a little like goosebump moment. So just, I think I'm picturing the beautiful impact you're having because of course that geography, I mean, we are in space having our own ripples, right? You have the impacts, the aha moments in your gatherings and then we all go home and then the ripples get to continue. So saluting this global impact you're having mm. in your groups. Do you find as well that when you're in a group, like the container that we've been in, someone yeah. else will ask the question that was kind of in your head? So even if you're All not contributing actively yourself, yeah. there will be so much just juice in what other people are saying that will then resonate with you and will be really useful for you. Yes, I find it all the time. In fact, I, I think part of it is just deciding to put yourself around people who share values and goals. It's that simple. That's, that's the whole thing. And then it, you get almost like, um, uh, what do you call it? It's like a sped up uh, processing, right? <laughs> Where you get the benefit of everybody asking all the questions, a little bit, everything, everywhere, all at once which is mm -hmm. oh, really cool, yeah. right? In a way, we get to be all these people <laughs> and lift in the way that all these people are working through and processing all at the same time. Mm. I think it's it's really magical. Does that make sense, yeah. that image? That, Absolutely, that yeah, that's what's the, the collective wisdom. Collective wisdom, and it's like we all had, we could all have their experience and, and have the learn all at once. Mm. It's pretty cool. Pretty, pretty amazing what's possible. Yeah. That's great. Um, what can I, um, what can we discuss as a business challenge that's, that you're uh, uh -huh. holding right now? I was thinking about that because I have done bits of freelance work in the past, but I've never been completely my own boss. And mm. what I've been finding really interesting as things grow and become more complex is, I guess it's about how to scale the business because I'm so used to being an employee or even as a freelancer, it was always, you know, running someone else's projects as a producer or as a fundraiser, you're, you know, you're writing someone else's funding bid. And I think what's been really interesting is that kind of catch 22 of thinking, right, I need more support, but I'll wait until I get a bit bigger before I get some support but then I can't mm -hmm. get into this I get some support that very kind of circular mm -hmm. problem of recognizing of like how can I um I guess this that phrase that zone of genius phrase how can I concentrate on my zone of genius and get the support I need to do everything right. else I don't necessarily want to be doing as well 
Right. And I feel like I'm just hitting that point of going, yeah, this is getting a bit big too for me to hold everything. I need to pass some stuff off to other people. That's also exciting. I love as a mm-hmm. business coach, I'm like, oh, this is the juicy part. <laughs> yeah, there's kind of too much money coming your way. I think <laughs> of it as like, here's a water metaphor again. Oh, now the river is full. Now you get to choose. I just want this part of the river or the best parts and mm-hmm. and the best parts of the tasks too. So good for you. It's very exciting. And I forget as well that I'm my own boss. Yes, I kind of forget that I, if, I just, yeah, if I fancy not working in the afternoon, I don't have to. I can go off and do something else. And sometimes I, I just slip back into that old habit of I must work these hours. So nice not Amazing. To. Well, we talked about it right from the top, the power of the mm-hmm. sea and how all of that time gets to literally come back as dollars into your business. Isn't that magical and incredible? What a privilege. Mm. So this is where, what I offer people who are thinking to add help. It is scary to um, think about the dollars that will go out, but here's the tools that I offer is think about how many more dollars get to come in when you invest this much. I have a phrase that I say, I am a safe bet, right? You, if, if we're betting on, I mean, we bet, here's a way I say it too. We throw our dollars all over the place, really, like all day long. In that sense, we bet on other people. Or if you have investments, we've been trained to put dollars in our 401ks and all of that. These are ways that we bet on other people. But actually, your company, right, yourself is a safe bet especially if you do a little homework and really, you know, it can be a specific calculation that says I will invest these dollars and it will return in 3x, 5x, 10x these dollars. Trusting yourself that Mm. that's possible. So I have my clients sometimes do a task audit and just say, like, look at, just list everything that you're doing right now even the, the act of listing everything, you get clear on the things really that are like, ugh, no, yuck. But like sometimes there's even the in-betweens that are like, if I didn't have to do that thing, I would get so much return on time mm-hmm. and delightfulness, right? On, on uh, delegating that and trusting that there is somebody out there that is, I mean, have you ever met somebody who loves bookkeeping (laughs) that is an example that I'm like oh this is proof this is a wide world and not everybody is us Mm. yeah I coached someone once who was like she loves spreadsheets and plate spinning and I was like come work for me (laughs) yes yes and there's a person there's a person that really it gets to be a win-win Mm. I it was really interesting I used to be that person when yeah, I was the I producer imagine. I loved you know I like being really organized and I like my lists I still do love that side yeah I'm but sure. I feel like I've completely shifted into wanting to be the ideas person and just have the idea and deliver and create and have someone yeah. else hold the, the doing the producing side for me I mean I think this is you stepping into your CEO power your mm. I'm the boss power which i think is beautiful and how amazing that you do have the the knowledge on how to be you know the other side too which Mm -hmm. makes you a great boss of that that team that you will call in well you also have to resist the temptation to uh hold on to stuff to set yourself (laughs) well yeah let's let's talk about that what is the fear of letting go Mm. I suppose there's always a thing of will someone else do it the way I want it done mm-hmm. I think mm-hmm. it comes back to trust actually that you were saying earlier you know trusting in someone else's abilities and trusting someone else to be able to do what it is that they do right why right you I, and under that is trusting your ability to see that you can call in the person that does have that. Great point. Right? That, yeah. 
that you'll notice, and this is what I talk about just in my CEO School for Solopreneurs course, scarcity is the a scarcity mindset is the enemy of calling in the right person because there we make stories about like why would the ideal person want to work here you know that then we we won't see them right we won't see the the great person will be fine with the okay person <laughs> and and maybe even not see red flags that would tell us mm-hmm. um that that comment felt a little a little off, you know, but, but I just need someone. They're fine. I'm sure it'll work out. So trusting that you can find that person and that mm-hmm. you'll know. Yeah. So it's like a relationship, isn't it? It has to be the right kind of atmosphere, the right kind of fit. Yes. And of course, um, I mean, it happens that that's something as a single adult woman I struggle with too is, is king into, wait, I am pretty great. I can find the right person. <laughs> and I don't have to settle for an okay person. And, Absolutely. And yeah, so it's, I mean, similar muscles, which I just um, did a live this morning about, um, it's not unlike calling in the right client too, or customer, right? Again, we've seen how when it's an, it's an okay fit and not an amazing fit, how it's kind of just a struggle for both sides. It's it's a not not a win win. Mm. So, kind of same muscles of trusting self in some ways uh, underneath everything and clarity. But I think again, those two go together. Yeah, I totally recognize that. And I think, um, you know, when I was first building my business, you were in that position of just saying yes to pretty much any client because you're not yeah. settled into that, that sense of trust or you don't know who it is exactly you want to support. I think it took yeah. me a while to, um, I suppose it's a kind of a generosity of, of now we're, because I recognize that I want the client or potential client to have the best experience and to have the right fit for them. So I, yes. you know, I, obviously I know other coaches. So if someone doesn't feel like the right fit, I, I will always say no and just say, I think, this is the person I think you should get in touch with because they, they can support you more in that area where you need support. But it took me a while to kind of, yeah, that, that mindset of that, I guess it's a scarcity mindset again, of thinking, oh God, if they don't, they don't work with me, I don't mind that clients. But recognizing the right clients will come for you. Yes. How powerful that you've done that. You've said no. Still and still here you are still right? standing, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean about, like, the river is full. So mm. now you get to choose, right? And which, I mean, I have a friend who says that marketing is just us proving what what we, <laughs> what, who, how, what we offer to ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> In some ways, this is part of what we do, right, is just, just saying no and saying, like, look, I'm okay. <laughs> Everything is okay. The dollars are still coming. The right people are still coming, which I can tell with your group container, the right people have come, love to be there, and are bringing their friends. I feel so honored. There's such an amazing group of women, actually, particularly in that membership, that Compassionate Women's Collective. It's like the name just fits them so well. They're lovely, deep thinkers and very generous with their experiences and their ideas and who really honors yeah yeah in fact um just uh just want you to know that listening to you talk about your community helped me like kind of envision another level of who my ideal client is people who are really ready to um you know i'm a business coach and typical business coaches talk spreadsheets and revenue plans, and I am super prepared to do that. But I am this business coach that says, this doesn't matter unless it's founded on the real thing, the real, real Mm. thing that you want to be about, because then we, otherwise we spreadsheet ourselves into misery. (laughs) So (laughs) my struggle has been, or not struggle, I'll say my journey this year has Mm. been learning to call in the person that is super ready for this side, the 
the um, it's a bit of digging sometimes. It's not entirely comfortable for everyone. And, mm-hmm. and just allowing myself to call in what I felt you were describing in your container, these women who are ready to unblock and, and really just like kind of swim hard for that, you know, that they're, they're not um, afraid to mm. face those things. So thank you. How's that. that? How's that changed your experience of your business? Well, I feel like I just keep, um, you know, we talked earlier, you said about in the beginning where you just say yes to everyone. I mean, we just say yes to whoever makes sense to us at any moment, right? And of course, we keep evolving and learning and shifting and learning. So yeah, I think it has um, allowed me to, one, feel even more in my power in terms of who I get to um, like deliver relief from their misery is what I've really seen is, is beautiful because it's just become much more powerful when I'm getting into sort of root causes instead of just outside action. So that's been really exciting. Mm. Seeing everyone just how much more is available than any of us ever really, I think we're told, you know, or raised to know what is available to us gets to be wide open. Mm. So thanks. Thanks for asking me. (laughs) (laughs) It has been a journey. So how would you like people to find you and um, contact you for working with you? Is there something you want to call people to now? Mm. Am I working at the well, I mean, I have to be honest, I don't actually use Instagram that much anymore. That's okay. But I am on here occasionally. Uh, LinkedIn seems to be where my people hang out. So I'm, I'm on LinkedIn. If you just look for Annette Corbett, you can find me on there. Um, and I've just actually revamped my uh, membership, which I'm kind of excited about. So we've changed the structure a little bit. As, okay, you know, tell I'll us about that. the membership. Um, so it's, uh, we'll have a call like every other week. Um, okay. And the idea is that what people really wanted was more space to bring their own challenges. Because I started off where we would have a guest coach the first session of the month and then what I called a reflection session where people kind of talk about what had come up, come up from that masterclass. But people wanted a lot more space, uh, sort of less stuff and just more conversation. So I've now switched it around where we're probably only going to have maybe four or five guest coaches across a whole year. Um, Mm -hmm. and a lot more open Mm -hmm. conversation. Uh, We're going to use a peer coaching tool called Action Learning so people can really just build that community I want to build that we talked about. Um, So, yeah, I actually want to bring in a reading club at some point as well. Mm -hmm. I think that might be Mm -hmm. maybe towards the end of the year when I've got a bit more brain space to think about how it will work. So I'm super excited about that. Um, And also... exciting. Uh, in mid-October, so actually about a month from now, I am starting my group coaching program for women leaders in the arts called Leading on Purpose, which nice. is about values-centered leadership. And it's for those same kind of uh, very giving, very compassionate leaders who are used to supporting other people in their team, but maybe aren't looking up to themselves very well, and who... Uh, finding that you know they're reading all the books and they're listening to all the podcasts but it's just not really clicking so it's about some heart-centered leadership really leading from the inside out and that mm-hmm. important, what you were talking about really that foundational piece of like what's underneath all this why am I doing this and how mm-hmm. do I tap into what my leadership style is so that these wow. books make sense well and it's just like we talked about the group uh the power of the the community where clicks happen much faster, Ooh. right? Whatever is cooking a little bit here, you just almost don't have words for it until someone else demonstrates it or embodies it in a way that you're like, ding, ding, ding. Aha. Uh-huh. Even awesome. just saying stuff out loud to yourself, sometimes you go, oh, yeah, no, that. <laughs> yes. Yes. Really, it's and... just inside your head. It doesn't, it's not as coherent. 
I picture it like kind of boxed in there and kind of like small and mean and, and, and then you let it out and it gets to just run, run a little bit free. A picture like a bird in feathers, you know, really just getting to, to be fuller and present. Well, beautiful. So find you on LinkedIn. I know yeah, you are. My website um, is just annettecorbett.com as well. So that's Anna pretty easy Corbett. to find. Thank you. Thank you for hanging out, Annette. It was beautiful to be with you. It's been so lovely. Thank you so much for asking me. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you.